Okay. Okay, everybody, this is another sponsored stream. This is called The Dark Egg. I believe it's under Dark Egg uh, on Steam. It's one of the others. This is the demo. Uh, they have a Kickstarter, so please go visit the Kickstarter if you can. Exclamation mark sponsor in chat will send you the link to the game. Uh, yeah, so we're going to check this out for the next hour, and I hope that you guys enjoy it. Let's turn down the music volume. Just 50% because we don't need that. Love all the options it has already. Allow skipping of unseen text. Turn text voicing on off. Use 24 hour time. Turn map edge auto scrolling on off. Start game in full screen. Disables, are you sure? I actually, you know what was amazing in this already? Is that, whoops. Is that they had it in windowed for you to have the option to make it full screen after. That helps with streaming so much to have something in either full screen borderless or to be able to change it like that. That's that's an awesome option up here at the top. I like this. Like this, report a bug, join the Discord server, support. This is this is really cool being up there. I like that a lot. Uh, disables are you sure prompts when saving and loading. Enables quick save and quick load. Uh, display combat item descriptions on hover. Well, I guess we'll mess with that eventually. Um, lots of options, which I absolutely love. We will go to a new game. Welcome to uh, Dark Egg. Here we go. Oh, beautiful music. When I was young, I heard a story. I don't know what type of game this is, so I'm actually excited to, to find out. But this demo is available for you to download for free. The exclamation mark sponsored in chat. The island was empty, save for an old city. Its people were lost and hungry, and when they cried for help, there was no answer. But then, from the heavens, came the many eyes of grace, who gave an answer. Salvation arrived on winged creatures, speaking in tongues that aged men. They taught many secret things and what mind was. Like a Pokemon thing. Their gifts took away mankind's faults and replaced them with eyes of grace. The island was blessed, everyone was made right. The city was made better, its sun was consumed. The city was made into memory, living words in eternity. Screams faded and none came back from the island. Most leave the island alone except for those seeking its greatest treasure. An egg from the heavens, unspoiled and perfect. Resting in the womb of the old city. A thing that will grant any wish you desire. Ooh. Ooh. A thing that I must get. You've awoken to the rocking of a ship. You can't remember how many days it has been. Health, energy, sanity, trauma. Oh, is this like a text-based RPG. Oh. Maybe. Maybe. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna jump ahead. They said it would only take half a day to get to the island. Even the ferryman said so. But the ferryman has not moved from his spot since you got on this boat. He simply stares forward into a white mist with no island in sight. The sound of waves surrounds you and nothing else. Oh, and you pick. Talk to the ferryman or look for the island. Talk to the ferryman. You speak up to catch the ferryman's attention, but he makes no attempt at speaking back to you. He only continues to stare into the white mist ahead. Is the boat even moving? Oh, so now I go to the island. Okay. You peer over the boat and see rushing water. It is a relief to know the boat is going somewhere. You, like the ferryman, simply stare out into the mist-covered waters. There is no island in sight. Bag. Check my bag. 
You open your bag just beneath your feet. It is drenched by the mist and splash of the waves around you. The contents are nothing special. Gear you were told would help you on the island. Many assured you there would be a town near the seashore when you arrived. You're not so sure anymore. Uh, take inventory of your supplies. A good explorer always knows what he carries. Uh, so I have an equipped small knife, climbing rope, a compass, recovery potions. I have 30 gold. My attack is currently 6 and my defense is 5. Okay. Though you remember bringing a map of the island, you can't seem to find it in your bag. Maybe it fell out. Search for your map. A ruined map of the island and a broken compass. I got my map. You find your map on the floor of the ferry and pick it up. While you're no sailor yourself, it isn't completely foreign to you. The map is wet to the touch. Still hopeful, you open it, but find its contents unreadable anymore. The ink runs. It appears you'll need to draw a new one as you go. You place the map in your bag near your compass and notice the dial spinning erratically. Pulling it out, you try to hold it steady. The dial only grows more wild. Upon hearing a rustle from the front of the boat, you look up from your bag. The ferryman has returned, or has turned from the misty waters. He stares at you with dull eyes. Ocean mist drips from his pale chin. You feel his gaze on you. Uh, talk. You give a quick hello to the ferryman. His face remains expressionless. Black eyes stare directly at yours. We pass the normal waters. What do you mean? The ferryman lets out what looks like a weak smile. His eyes never leave you. You sure did chew off a lot, didn't you? Don't even know about the silver waters. The ferryman laughs, turning to face the misty waters once again. We'll be to shore soon. Be dropping you off. I won't go to shore myself, you know. Never go to shore. Okay. Uh, why not? The ferryman stares for a long time. To step on that island is to become something else. But you knew that already, didn't you? Uh, what do you mean, something else? I know what you're after, and the island knows too. They all know. The ferryman leans forward to you. That is why you never go to shore. The ferryman nods, as if knowing you already understand. Right. Well, thanks for letting me know. Of course. The ferryman turns from you and stares back out over the ocean waves. To your relief, you begin to see a land, you begin to see a land emerge from the white mist. Um, relief. We made it. You certainly did, the ferryman replies. The shoreline gets closer, and soon you see dim yellow lights cut through the white mist around you. You stand to get a closer look. The ferryman remains sitting motionless. The shoreline is decorated in yellow lights, and as the boat gets closer, a silhouette of a dark, wet town appears before you. The light seems to dance in mist and rain. It is the harbor. Best be quiet when you get to shore, the ferryman whispers. Um... Should I be worried? Caution is wise, but I don't know how much it will help you on that island, the ferryman replies weakly. We'll be aboard in a moment. Best to sit down. You sit where your bag rests. The cold splashes of water pepper your numbing face. You let it a breath and see it mist in front of you. Is it getting colder? Prepare to dock. The ferryman raises his hand, and as he does so, the boat slows. The boat twists and turns as if four men are piloting it. You remember that there was a crew on this boat when you first set off. There was a crew, wasn't there? The boat comes to a halt, and beside the boat, you see a worn wharf. Best of luck to whatever it is you're searching for, stranger. You look to the ferryman and are surprised to find he is not at the head of the boat any longer. That is strange. He was there a moment ago. You look around, but did not find him anywhere. It is only you, and there's only the dock. A small layer of snow covers it. This guy's a good writer. The 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 person who wrote this game, they did it very well. It seems more like a, a novel. I lost I lost a point of energy. Step off the boat. You step off the boat and your feet press into the snow. Light rain begins to pepper your face as you walk into town. I lost another bit of energy. Oh. Rain and snow. Oh, what is this? Oh, you can move the map. Oh. Rain and snow pelt against your body. The harsh wind claws at your face. You realize now that you're far underprepared for what is to come. 
The town is quiet, and the street lamps glow a dim yellow in, uh, in the winds around you. Not a soul is in sight, but as you walk forward, you hear the laughter of a man to your right. Near him is a small shop. Your footsteps splash in the road. Um, talk to the strange man. You approach the man, apprehensive. His laughs continue to echo through the roads as if amplified by something. No one else is around, and you notice the man has no smile on his face. You greet him and ask him if he knows where anyone else is. The laughter stops. He turns his face towards you, but does not meet your eyes. His gaze lies behind you, a pale face without life. His eyes reflect nothing. There is no one else. There is just you. The man turns from you and walks away. He shortly begins to laugh again, growing quieter as he vanishes from your view. Chop. You walk up to the small shop and open the door, getting out of the rain quickly. The inside is a good deal warmer than out there. Lining the walls rests all kinds of goods, from the small vials to books and art. Centered at the back is a large wooden countertop. Behind the counter sits a pale bearded man, and behind him a wall. From a seat, he towers over you just slightly. His eyes are nearly closed, and he appears amused at your presence. Funny. Haven't had visitors in a long time, he chuckles. But then again, perhaps you aren't a visitor at all. What are you here for? Um, your equipment. You ask the man if he has any equipment to help you on your journey. He motions towards the back of the shop. As you walk, you find racks of various clothing, some with fur, others with very, uh, various embellishments. You realize most of it is common wear and unfortunately not very helpful for what you plan to do. You think you can't use any of it, the man asks for a moment. He looks you up and down. You do have a fine piece of leather on you, but armor isn't everything out there. He points to a thick coat near you. The cold can be just as deadly as the creatures, if not more so. I've seen many experts of the sword freeze before they made even a single swing. 40 gold. I don't think I have 40 gold. I have 30 gold. Nope. Potions. How many potions do I currently have? I have two recovery potions so far. You take a look at the man's potion supply, but find it rather barren. Don't carry much more than the essentials here, the man says. Not many visitors means uh, not many buyers either. Still, you're welcome to take a look around. Ooh. I have two of these already. I'm going to buy another one of those. Just one. That'll put me at 20 gold. Never mind. What are you here for? And I don't need to do that either. Your footsteps splash in the road. I need to go to the street now. As you follow a trail of wind and rain through the town, you walk empty streets lined with yellow lights and past buildings with no people. The weather worsens as the road opens up a bit uh, to houses on one side and a chapel on the other. You see what looks like to be people. But as you get closer, you notice that they make no sound. All of them care not for the rain, letting it fall on their pale skin. Their black eyes stare at nothing. They walk from tree to street, or sorry, they walk from street to street, I don't know why I said tree, building to building without pause and with emotion. None turn to you as you walk by. You stand in the center of the road, blank faces passing you by. The chapel appears empty. Ooh. Talk to a passerby. You call out to one of the people walking past, but they ignore you. You try again, only to fail again. Not a single one turns their head. Persist. You call out to more people, but the rain drowns you out. You reach for a person, only for them to change direction as you do. Not a single one turns their head. Okay. Uh, explore the back alley. In the back alley, the rain is unable to reach. It is far more quiet. Snow still falls steadily, and near the end of the alleyway rests a woman and her child, frozen and dead. Their faces hold sadness and hope, and before them rests an offering box. You notice that the woman has a coat you could wear. It wouldn't do her any good. Uh, no. I'm not going to do any of that. Uh, chapel. The chapel is quiet. The floors, walls, and ceilings are tiled with glossed black stone. Between the stones rests worn white grout. Pictures of people in their harbor and the harbor line the walls, and lanterns rest in all four corners of the large room. In its center lies an altar. On it is a dark egg. You feel the egg calling to you. 
inspect the egg. You walk up to the egg, passing rows of empty pews along the way. At the altar, you notice four pedestals surrounding the egg, each with a lit beacon. A faint glow surrounds the egg. Check the pedestals. You go towards one of the pedestals and notice that from each one extrudes out a glowing barrier of sorts. Nearly invisible, it's likely a dangerous trap meant to protect the egg. The four pedestals are lit and a barrier protects the egg. Uh, check the left. You examine the left pedestal and notice a switch behind it, beneath its beacon. You try to press it but find it's locked. You examine the right pedestal and notice a switch beneath the beacon. You try to press it, but find it's locked behind. You step around to the back of the altar. Left, it's going to be locked. Oh, and you hear a click. The beacon switches off with a low hum, the barrier dim with it. So walking, okay. Sparks fly from the other three beacons towards the edges of the chapel. One goes to the picture, is now through a large stained glass window, and the third to the back of the chapel. After a moment, the pedestals rest once more. Three pedestals around the eggs are lit. The barrier protects the egg. I'm going to check the large window. You follow one of the sparks towards the stained glass window lining the chapel's wall. It depicts two wide wings surrounding the mess of colored panes without any real form. Despite the cloudy weather, light still shines through, tracing the floor. You can hear the rain pattering against the glass. Nothing in the window moves, and yet every time you look back, you swear the colors are different. Check the floor where the light shines. The patterns made on the floor seem suspicious. When you get close, you notice a grid marked with lines and dots. The light touches only specific dots. Oh. The light hitting the dot crawls through the lines connected. The light hitting the dot crawls through the lines connected. Okay. It seems you can move the lines around. A second grid sits right of the first. Blocks get in the way. Blocks get in the way. So I have to get this line to this line. That's what this is saying. If I do... Oh, why did that not do that? Okay, I think I think I know what I'm supposed to do. Let me I I understand I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Okay, cool. Uh, a third grid sits to the right first with some spots missing. This is cool. Okay. Okay. With a click, the third pattern lights up. Soon after, the light from beyond the glass vanishes and the patterns dull down to just scratches in the floor again. The rain continues to patter outside. When you turn around, you see one less lit pedestal around, pedestal around the egg. Two pedestals around the egg are lit. The barrier is even harder to see now. Check the pictures lining the wall. On the side of the chapel are various pictures spaced out across the entire wall. You approach the first and scan past each one noting their contents. You'll need to look more closely to find anything. Look at the picture of the harbor. You see an eagle, eye, eagle eye's view of the harbor, only it is a beautiful day and filled with blue. Around the town are small blots of people in color, unlike anything you've ever seen in your brief stay. The warmth of the scene radiates from the painting. The layout of the harbor, even 
uh, individual buildings are identical to the real thing. Perhaps this is a recent work. You can even make out the small shop you passed along your way. Someone is walking into it. Wait. As you scan past the shop, something catches your eye. You peer closer and see an odd gray blotch. It's the man, the man you talk to, the laughing man. You make eye contact. You recoil, but then he's gone. In his place is a blurry smudge on an empty street. You'll need to look more closely to find anything. The beautiful cityscape covers the picture, surrounding a large town square. The architecture is some of the finest you've seen. In the center of the town square rests something large. Everyone is looking at it, surrounding it, a creature. It becomes increasingly abstract towards the center. You can't tell what you're supposed to be looking at. It looks like it's breathing. You'll need to look more closely to find anything. Picture of the dark egg. The dark egg stands in all its glory. In the center of a frame at each corner is an angel, arms outstretched and holding a cloth they aim to drape over the egg. Behind the egg, in the distance, you see the same scene again. The brightness of the egg contrasts its name. Its brilliance seems to glow off the ink. You feel like you can understand the, pra the praises the angels sing of it. In truth, you've never been more certain of its power and of your goal. Out of the corner of your eye, you notice a small switch right by the painting. Was that always there? You reach out of the flick and switch and hear an echoing click behind you. You turn and see one of the four beacons is dimmed away. The barrier weakens. One pedestal around the egg is lit. It's trying its best. At the back of the chapel, the lights are dim. The roof slides down as you near the edge, squeezing the room. The space is mostly empty, though there are various objects and furniture strewn about. You notice various books at one corner and a closet nearby, in the other a piano. The floor is a mess, but not a speck of dust is in sight. Uh, let's look at the closet. You open up the closet and find it deeper than you first thought, far, far deeper, though you're certain the chapel wasn't this long from the outside. Was it? Find a light switch. You feel around for a light switch and find one, pressing it. Immediately, candles begin lighting a narrow hallway, row by row. On both sides of the hallway stand mannequins. Their faces are blank, save for two black holes where eyes should be. They all turn to you. <laughs> leave, 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 move forward. Okay, I'm going to leave for now. Let's go to the piano. We can go back to the closet after. You find a rather beautiful piano, despite its dust. Its entire body has a lovely wooden sheen, and the ivory keys sit eager to be played. You're not really sure what to play, but you play all the same. I bet you... I bet you I have to play a specific tune. Yeah. Yeah. Books. You go to pick up the books, opening them as you do. You quickly find they are all in a language you do not understand. You place them on a nearby shelf. The floor is a mess, but not a speck of dust is in sight. Okay. One pedestal around the eggs like it's trying its best. Okay, we did that already. We did that already. There's something at the back of the chapel we still have to do. There's no other question marks. The floor is a mess, but not a speck of dust. So we did, I have to do something with the piano. I need to go back to the closet. I need to move forward. Creep past the mannequins slowly and without a sound. They do not move. And yet when you turn around, the ones behind you have turned their heads. Their eyes bore into you. Uh-oh. Oh, my sanity went down. You ignore the mannequins and press on. The hallway is endless. The mannequins are endless and everything looks the same. You're tiring. But thankfully, as you keep moving through the rows of heads, you stumble upon what seems to be the very same door you came in from. There's something there. <coughs> Painted sheet music for a piano! Alright. Uh, it's time to leave. The only question is how to leave. Uh, this door. Tentatively, you go to open the door in front of you. Nothing looks out of place. The same door, you're sure of it. But when you pull the door, you find it locked. You'll have to go back down the hallway. You turn around and aren't even surprised to find the mannequin staring at you once more. Scurry back through the hallway, going as quickly as possible. 
It'd be best not to come back here again. The floor is a mess, but not a speck of dust is in sight. We're going to the piano. Play. Is this the... Oh. What are those? Where's the... I thought I picked up a thing. Oh. I guess that's what this is then. Where's this last one? There we go. As soon as you press the final key, a click is heard behind you and the piano goes silent. You turn around and find one of the four pedestals has turned off. All four pedestals are unlit. The barrier is gone and so is the egg. You wonder if your eyes are playing a trick on you. Stepping up to the altar where the barrier used to be, you can see as clear as day, the egg is gone. Hey, State Zero, how are you, buddy? Nice to see you. Hope you're doing well. You feel the altar looking for it. Perhaps it's been hidden. Try as you might, you find nothing about the egg. You are surprised, however, to find metal beneath your hand. You check your hand and find a key. You're not sure where the egg went, but this key could come in handy. What could it be for? The chapel is quiet. Pictures line the walls. A grand window frames the other, and the egg is gone. Uh, I'm good. Thanks for asking. Uh, I'm having a good weekend. This is a sponsored stream. This is called New Egg, or Dark Egg. Sorry, this is called Dark Egg. I don't know why I keep saying New Egg. Uh, it is a demo that is on Steam, uh, so feel free to do exclamation mark uh, sponsor in chat if you want to check it out. This is the demo. We stand in the center of the road. Uh, we went to the alley. Let's go to the house. Knock on the door of a nearby home. Come in, you hear. Uh, you open the door and walk inside the house. On your left rests a calming fire, and close to it, a man in a wheelchair. His face is tired. Eyes are black. New egg is where you get computer parts. Yeah, that's true. That's probably why I keep saying new egg. Very, very true. Um, man in a wheelchair. His face is tired. Eyes are black. Yeah, state zero. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I hope I hope the new year has treated you okay, and I hope uh, everybody's safe and healthy. He turns to you and smiles. Oh, a guest. Come get warm by the fire. You start towards the jovial man. Why? I can't remember the last time we've had guests. How is it out there? The rain doesn't seem to be doing you many favors, he chuckles, looking back into the fire. Well, you can rest here as long as you need. My wife has always been a great hostess, but she's out at the moment. A shame you can't meet her. You take a seat next to the man, and he suddenly turns to you. Say, did you happen to see my wife and daughter on your way? They were supposed to go for my medicine. I'm reading and thinking at the same time. I think I have to go back into the chapel, go through the closet, go past the mannequins, and use the key on that door. I'm going to try that. I have that key, right? Chapel key, yeah. It's not for the entrance. Was there another door in the chapel? Yes. Uh, say, did you just happen to see my wife, daughter, in way? They were supposed to go for my medicine. Oh, no. You tell the man you didn't see anyone. He nods, leaning back with a distant look. Oh, well, they should be back any moment. I'm sure of it. I did see them. Weren't they frozen dead in the in the alleyway? Ask about the weather. The weather, he turns to you amused. What's to say about it? Shouldn't I shouldn't I have an option to tell him I did see them? Oh no. No, it won't get sunny. If you're planning to venture out much further, make sure you're prepared. The cold is vicious out there, vicious. My wife is strict about keeping bundled up. Ask about the chapel. The man leans back in his chair when you ask him about the chapel. Ah, the old chapel. Such a lovely structure, isn't it? Say, have you seen the inside? You say you haven't. He shakes his head. That's no good. No good at all. Take a look inside. But I have seen the inside. I've already been there. This is the second game in a row where continuity doesn't make any sense. Oh. Oh, wait. Wait. So I have. I thought it just said. <laughs> I'm so confused. Uh, oh, can I go back? Hold on. You say you have. Wait, wait, wait. The man leans back in his chair when you ask him about the chapel. 
Ah, the old chapel. Such a lovely structure, isn't it? Say, have you seen the inside? You say you haven't. He shakes his head. That's no good, no good at all. Take a look inside. You'll love it. Beautiful building. You tell him you have. The old man gets a smile. Yes, beautiful, isn't it? The artwork especially. I know my granddaughter loves the pictures. Did I just tell him that I haven't and then I have? It should cut out that entire... Oh, whatever. Okay. I still remember when the folk around here used to actually visit the old thing. He stares off in thought. If I'm not mistaken, it was built back when people were first coming to the island. It was for the egg. The dark egg. They really worshipped that thing back then. The man lets out a snort. What am I even saying? They still do. Who could blame them? Not like there's much else around here. Why, it's the only thing that brings people to the island anymore. The man's belly rolls with each heaving laugh. Ask about the chapel's dark egg. You ask the man about the dark egg in the chapel. Oh, that old monument? Hmm, it's a convincing replica, yes? But really, it's nothing like the real thing when you get close to it. It's nothing. Nothing like it, you know? The man grips the arm of his chair. It lacks the feeling, right? You know, right? He turns to you eyes wide. It's nothing, right? Just a goddamn fake, he spits out. The feeling it gives. The promises it makes. The lies it tells. That fake filth is nothing to the egg. Is there something you want to talk about? Okay. Uh, let's go back to the chapel. Let's go to the chapel back to the closet. Move forward. Continue. You ride to the end once again. This door. You go to the open the door in front of you. Nothing looks out of place. The same door. You're sure of it. Sealing yourself, you unlock the door and creak it open to what looks like the back of the chapel. Only something seems off. Oh. Wait, what? Inspect the altar in the chapel's center. You go to the altar in the center and find a stone resting on it instead of the egg. Bizarre... Bizarrely, the barrier has returned, or perhaps this is a different barrier, a different altar altogether. This time, the beacons the pedestals hold are all turned off. Testing one of the pedestals, you find the switches they hold are working this time around, only they are a bit unpredictable. Press on one turns on some lights, press on the other turns them off, at least they are consistent. The stone shimmers behind the barrier and some pedestals stand unlit. You're not sure what the stone is, but it's a purer black than what paves this chapel. Attempt to open the barrier. The pedestals rest, their beacons unlit. What would pressing their switches do? You hear a click, but the lights shut off. The switches are behaving d differently too. Oh. Another click, but the pedestal is shut off again. One locks with a barrier, it will need to be lit and unlocked. Another click, but the pedestal shut off again. One locks with a barrier, it will need to be lit and unlocked. Oh. Oh. Pedals the road of life and finally quench the barrier. With the low drone, it vanishes from view as well. Four pedals still stand with lit beacons. All that's left is to grab the stone. Four pedals stand around the altar, beacons lit, where the stone once rested now lies nothing. A deep black stone with an undulling sheen. It can be used in many ways, but once used, it will vanish. Choose wisely. 
Heading over to the chapel's gallery, you find each picture is distorted. For some reason, it's possible to tell why they are wrong, but you can feel they are wrong. Fundamentally, the colors, the setting, it's all wrong. You feel disgusted and have to turn away. Okay. You turn to where the window would be and find pictures instead. The other side of the chapel holds no window, only a flat wall of black stone. In fact, it dawns on you that there are no windows here, even not even small ones. You go to open the chapel doors, but find them locked. Your key doesn't work. Okay, well, I got the stone, so. Prize in hand, you decide it's time to head back. You turn back and open the closet, finding the long hallway once more. Only one thing left to do. Time to go. You walk down the hallway, wondering if what you saw was just a dream. But the shimmering stone in your hand gently says otherwise. The floor is a mess, but not a speck of dust in sight. The chapel is quiet, pictures on the walls, a grand window frames the other, and the egg is gone. Um. Continue past the town. Okay. Continue up the path, climbing a small hill. The bitter wind gets worse with every step. As the hill plateaus, you reach the edge of a large cliffside overlooking a mass, massive chasm. Up ahead is the ruined city. Cold gates rest in front of your city walls, surrounding it as far as the eye can see. They hold strong even after many their many years. You see, you can see a palpable fog over the city. It seems to cling to it. A trail leads down towards the city gate, growing more snow-filled as it goes. Uh, everybody remember, this is called Dark Egg. Uh, this is the demo. Uh, the game hasn't fully released yet. There is a Kickstarter. So if you feel that you want to contribute to that, just look up uh, Dark Egg Kickstarter. Uh, it is a uh, it is very much a text-based adventure game uh, with some RPG elements for sure uh, in terms of the stats and stuff. But yeah, you can check that out if you'd like. You can see a palpable fog over the city. It seems to cling to it. A trail leads going towards the gate, growing more snowfield as it goes. Opposite to it lies a flat trail towards what appears to be a small log cabin. Lanterns light the way. Nearby, a knight in black armor stands overlooking the ruin below. The cold gates in the city they hold rest ahead, surrounded by mist. The black knight stands overlooking the ruins. Nearby, the path to the log cabin is dimly lit. Um, walk to the abbey, talk to the knight. Let's talk to the knight first. You approach the knight. He's covered head to toe in sleek black armor, leaving nothing exposed. His sword sticks in the ground in front of him and his hands rest on his hilt. He doesn't turn, but when you come, but when you come close, he speaks before you can. So you've come. I'm not sure why I'm surprised. He speaks strangely as if familiar of you. Uh, do I know you? Do you know me? Where are you looking? Do you know me? I know you're here to claim the egg. You know there are many of you, right? Don't think you're unique on this journey, in your journey. The knight gestures towards the ruined city with his head. How many of you do you think I see go into that city? Many, how many do you think I've seen come back out? The knight's form sags ever so slightly. Do I know you? The knight turns to you, water glistening along his helmet. You see only black through the few cracks. He studies you for a brief moment before responding, no, I don't think you do. The knight turns back to the city. Where are you looking? The knight stands silent long enough that you wonder if he didn't hear you. Then he responds, that mist above the city. It clings to the ruins like it's alive. It's something I noticed a long time ago. It isn't natural. You can even see the edges of it whisk away as soon as it gets too far from the walls. You follow his gaze to the ruins edges and see he's right. The mist stops just past the borders, clinging to the city alone. The knight clutches the hilt of his sword tighter. When you plan to go in there, you should be prepared. This place, your egg, it isn't what it seems. He turns towards you, but you already know that. You can't see his face, but you can feel his gaze. You say goodbye to the knight and turn to leave, but he stops you. Wait, he says, I think you should have this before you go. 
Ooh. I know you're planning to enter the ruins and know nothing will stop you either, but when it goes to hell, maybe this time I'll see one of you come out of there. What did he just give me? A blast potion. Throw for an emergency explodes on impact. Okay. Uh, let's go to the abbey. You stand in the center of the road. Oh. Oh, wait. Uh, walk down the path towards the gates. Okay. As you move downward, the snow starts to stick to the ground. The rain stops completely. A howling wind blows from the gates ahead, black metal polished with ice. You approach the gate, but find it to be locked. You give the gate a light push, but it doesn't budge. Strown around are frozen bodies covered in snow. Oh. Inspect the bodies. All around you are bodies of unspoken adventurers, merchants, wanderers. Each journey began for their own reason, but all ended up here. It seems that most things have already been taken lightly from other travelers along the way. You do, however, find a pouch of gold and a sword. You've never used one before. It might very well be time to learn. Strown around or frozen by... Okay, so did I... Oh, sword. And money. Now I have 35 gold. I got a sword. Attack plus 5, attack plus 7. And equip that. Um, I'm not going to push past that. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to walk towards the cabin. You walk towards the cabin. It's trail common flat. You pass odd lumps, rocks, maybe as you go. The closer you get, the larger you realize the cabin is. And s Oh, the closer you get, the larger you realize the cabin is. And soon you see a sign faded and chipped that simply says in. The lumps grow more numerous. Upon closer inspection, you realize they are frozen bodies wet with rain. They stretch their arms towards the inn. Inspect the frozen bodies. You, ed you edge closer to one of the frozen people. They look to be locked in time from the cold. You look around the men. You look around to men, women, even children strewn along the pathway. As you look from person to person, you find them all reaching directly towards the door of the inn. Some with one hand outstretched, others with both. Some use their weapons, their bags, even their face if they had nothing else. A chill runs down your spine and you soon stop looking. You manage to find some spare gold lying around in the meantime. I like I like that. The the clicking of the that's cool. Like how you can click on the map to find stuff that's thrown around. That's neat. Neat. Dang inside the inn, bodies lights are it's quiet, the lights are inside. Um Enter the inn. You walk inside the inn, the warmth kissing your face. A counter flanked by two sets of stairs lies centered in front of you, with the fire crackling gently in the corner. The room is constricted, otherwise tight wooden walls save for the fireplace. The room is not even a fraction of the size. How much money do I have now? 45. I'm going to go get that coat. The room is not a fraction of the size of what you saw outside. The man behind the counter looks up at you. He beckons you to come closer. It only takes a few steps. Another traveler, I see. Come to rest your weary body. It's cold out there, no? He looks back towards one of the stairwells. I've seen many travelers come and go through this inn of mine. Some young and filled with spirit, others old enough to know better. But no better. But no matter the reason for your journey, I can guarantee you rest here for when you need it. Did things ever become too dire out there? I imagine you might well wake up here again. After all, no matter the nightmare, it is just a nightmare after all, isn't it? The innkeeper looks down at something on his desk, but you cannot see it. Begins to write, now tell me, traveler, why have you come here? If you wish to sleep, just enter up the stairs, either one. Uh, if you'd rather a short rest, the fireplace has room for more. The firelight dances across the room. There are a few windows where rain and snow patter outside. It feels safe. Um, tell the innkeeper about your journey. You decide to tell the innkeeper the reason of your journey. You tell him that you wish to get the dark egg. His eyes light up as you speak. Well, who am I to stop someone from trying to reach their desires? One doesn't go looking for the egg without sense and purpose. Try and hold the dark egg is to risk everything, and the road will not be kind to you, young one. No, it will not be kind at all. The innkeeper reaches into a drawer below the desk, and you hear rustling of paper and clattering of metal. He pulls a small key up on the countertop. 
This here is the key to the gates. I'd be happy to give it to you, but first I must ask you to do something for me. <coughs> a lot of talking. You look to him and ask him what he wants. He smiles. What I want, young one, is a stone from the chapel. You remember the chapel, right? You must, you must have passed it on the way here. Hard to miss. Quite charming on the inside, too. Inside that chapel is a stone, a magic stone of sorts, or at least that's what the rumors have said. No one has found any such thing for as long as the chapel has stood. I already got it. He grabs the key, places it back in his drawer. But you seem different, young one. I want you to search for it. It's not a deal breaker if you can't find it. It's just a rumor after all. In truth, it's wishful to still believe something like that could exist after all this time. But as someone aiming for the egg, I imagine you should know what it's like to chase a wish. I think you know exactly what it is that I feel. You nod. Uh, I'm probably just across the room. There are a few windows where rain and snow patter. Okay, so I'm going to leave the inn. I'm going to go back to the overlook. I'm going to go back to the abbey, back to the streets, to the shop, get the equipment. I'm going to buy the winter coat. Um, I'm going to equip the winter coat. Okay. I'm going to exit the shop, back to the street, go back to the overlook, go to the inn, enter the inn, and give the innkeeper the stone. You tell him you've gotten the stone, he perks up immediately. Did you now? Well, let's see it. You rifle through your bag and find it, handing it to him. His eyes light up and he cradles the stone close like a child. My, my. This is the stone, all right. What a beauty it is. He leans back in his chair, examining the stone. Its sheen is even more exaggerated in the dim lighting. I must say, I wasn't sure if you'd manage, but you did, young one. You did. With a pleased sigh, he puts the stone down and slides it back to you across the counter. He opens his drawer and pulls out paper. He writes. You look at him with growing confusion. You thought he wanted the stone. Yes, I did, young one, but not to keep. A tired man like me has no need for such a stone. There's nothing left for me to change. I only wanted to confirm the rumors I heard so very long ago. And now that I have, I am more than satisfied. He gestures for you to pick up the stone. Go on, take it. Use it wisely. And of course, your key. He places the key on the counter. You might as well leave the gates open while you're at it. I fear any others who would have tried to get past them are long gone by now. Can I pick up the key? No. Oh, I got it. Okay. It is silent for a bit, and thinking the conversation over, you begin to turn. Oh, before you go, young one, I should warn you. I'm sure you've seen the mist around that city. It makes things cold. Very cold. Going without proper clothing will be a terrible idea. You won't make it far. Of that, I can assure you. The firelight dances across the room. There are a few windows where rain and snow patter outside. It feels safe. The fireplace looks inviting. There are various chairs around it. A man sits on one. He appears tired, wrapped in a shawl. When you sit down, he greets you. Uh, for the first time since coming to the island, his welcome feels natural. His eyes and face have color and warmth. You greet the man back. Good to see a familiar face around here, he says. You pause, confused. Another traveler, I mean. Easy to tell you're not from the island, he adds, after noticing your confusion. The man turns back to the fire. He said. You grab a welcoming chair and sit by the fire. Its lapping flames uh, flick warmth around you. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I like the piano. I don't know whether I'm turning this off or on. Yeah. Uh, talk. What would you like to talk about? Uh, talk about the egg. You're after the dark egg, he asks. You tell him you are and that you must get it. I see. That is quite the journey then. Though not too surprising, nearly every traveler I meet is after the egg. He sinks in his chair a bit. I don't think I can change your mind, but you should think twice about it. You stare us into the flame, past the flame, into nothing. It never turns out how you want it to. He closes his eyes. I wonder why it is that we seek a wish to change our lives, when it is something that, deep down, we do not wish to change. Talk about the cold gates. Ah, the cold gates. Those ruins are as beautiful as they are deadly. I've only been once myself, turned around just from the cold. 
The man snuggles in his shawl, staring into the flame. I'm sure you've heard it a hundred times already, but that place is cold. Far, far colder than it has the right to be. It isn't natural. You'll need a key to get past the gate, and you'll need to pass the city to get to your egg. He turns to you and sits up straighter. But you know, they didn't lock that gate to keep things in. No, nothing from that city ever leaves, and that's why they locked it, to keep travelers, you, out. Once you go past that city, you won't come back here. One reason or another, you won't come back here. You've noticed how strange the town is, haven't you? A wide harbor with no boats, rows of buildings without people, even this rotten rain, it never stops. I can't tell you what's wrong, but I know, I just know something is wrong. He leans in his chair. Hey, it's not too late to turn back. He looks towards you, but relents when he sees your confidence. Well, if you're determined, I won't stop you, of course. But if nothing else, take this harbor, harbor as a warning. There's not much on this island beyond those ruins. This is the warmest welcome you'll get. You get up from the fire and ask the man and ask if the man is ready to leave too. In a moment he says, I just need some time to rest. I'm gonna sleep because my energy is down to ten. You begin to ask about the cost of the room, but the innkeeper stops you. You won't need coin if you just wish to rest. It costs us nothing. But, he adds as you begin walking the stairs, if you wish to change yourself, that will always cost you, as much as it costs anyone else. And while a night or two of rest could serve you well, I would avoid sleeping for too long. The island doesn't like visitors. You decide to ignore his cryptic comments, perhaps they will make more sense in the future. After climbing the stairs, you find yourself between rows of countless rooms down a long, straight hall. Though you hadn't been given a key, you find one in your hand. Its tag says 8. The hallway isn't lit, only light from the staircase illuminates the path. Each and every room you pass as it's occupied, though you see no light coming from any door. You approach the door labeled 8, only vaguely able to see it with the weakening light. Your key slots in perfectly and you gently open the door. A lantern lights the room when you walk in. You see a bed and an orb. No problem, state. All good. Um, You feel the orb pulling you. The orb is a rather curious shade of grayish purple standing by the side of the bed. You've never seen anything like it. It appears dull, but as you near, its color becomes vibrant and bright. You reach your hand out and feel a warmth emanating from its surface. You touch the orb and feel your eyelids grow heavy. You close them and see yourself in a way you've never seen before. Whoa! This is incredible. Wow. Wow. And you choose a path that you want to go on. Damn. This this turned into a full-fledged RPG. Reset all skills. Wow. Well, strength is going up, so... You must learn all adjacent... Wait, what? I don't know, I don't know which one is spending. Oh, that gives me it. You do not have enough skill points. Oh, I have zero skill points, but I can take it away. Oh. Oh, so I am, I'm even right now all the way around. And that's where you say you find yourself in a room. Oh, that's super cool. But I don't have any skill, so I have six to spend though. Oh. So I don't, I, I feel like I shouldn't like. I'm gonna leave it for now. 
I'm gonna leave it for now. You remove your outer garments and get into bed. The light dims away as you do. Your eyes grow heavy and you drift off to sleep. I'm hoping that gives me my energy back. <coughs> Hey, all my energy and my sanity. That's awesome. Cool. Okay. We're gonna leave the inn. Go back to the overlook, go back to the path. Unlock. You approach the gate, key in hand. The metal is frozen to the touch, but the key still slides in until it fits snugly inside. A small turn and a series of grinding clicks are heard from the lock. All at once, the gate begins pulling outward, away from you. Metal screeches at regular intervals as the gate moves perhaps the first time in years. The gate begins to slow as it fully opens. Whatever mechanism the side that we're giving it the force to move also seem to be holding it in place. Grows tired, me totally not getting sleepy. The path to the ruined city is open. The snow surrounds the open gates. Their black frozen flames, or frames look like an open jail cell warning of the danger inside. The snow is getting heavier. Your hands are freezing. Ruined architecture carves a path through the snowy road up to the city entryway, a grand stone bridge. Bordering the entire city, or at least as much as you can see, is a great chasm. You cannot see the bottom, only the black nothingness it drops into. Snow rests atop mountains. On both your sides across the, the chasm. Past the city lies more in the horizon. The bridge is old and broken at various points, but it's your only way forward. It should be safe to walk, you tell yourself. It has to be. Crossing the bridge is no simple feat. As grand as it appeared on your way here, it is even grander to cross. You think you saw pillars reaching down into the chasm for support, but horrid groaning noises from the stone make you second guess yourself. Corpses dot the bridge as you cross it, some frozen and others without flesh. Uh, rifle through the bodies for whatever you can find. Knowing that many of these are like to be adventurers, you begin to rifle through each corpse for gold, items, weapons, anything of value. You do find a few things. As you search the eyes of the lost and the frozen catch yours, even as you try to avoid them, it shakes you. A piece of stonework crumbles off the bridge's side as you walk past it. It falls into the abyss and you never hear it hit the ground. The groaning gets louder. Uh, as you walk along, with each step you grow increasingly weary. A large fissure, a large fissure, spiders through the ground beneath you. Oh, a large okay. And see a massive. I was thinking of spider as in the thing, but I get what he's using that description word for. And see a massive crag of stone uh, slow off, slow, slog. And you see a massive crag of stone. I don't know how to pronounce that. Slew. Slow. Slew off. You pick up pace immediately. You scramble through the collapsing bridge, the sides bursting and crumbling. Debris flies behind you. With a shaking breath, you stumble into the solid edge of the bridge. The collapse has ceased, the ancient stone now in the abyss below. You look back at the wide divide, no turning back now. The landscape speckles itself with ruined bridges, old stone roads, and shattered monuments. The walls of the city reach much farther than what still stands. As you reach the end of the bridge, it crumbles out to the large drop down, out to a large drop downward. Through the mist, you can faintly see the broken remains of a stairway. Ooh, ooh, left, right, or jump? No. Could you make a rope way down? Go left. You walk up the staircase to the higher portion of the city. Ruins of the town lie below you, fading the fog as you climb. At the top of the staircase is a wide walkway filled with stands, homes, banners, and remnants of a well-used market. Snow covers everything you see. It's quiet. Houses, broken as they are, block your view past the immediate street. Ooh. Ooh. A ladder leads up to the roof of a house. The small alleyway is largely empty, but a small opening in the back leads into a house hidden from the main street. Inside is a lived-in room with a small man sitting inside, a blanket wrapped around himself. 
The room is noticeably warmer without the harsh winds inside. outside. He jolts up and looks up at you, surprised. Who? Who? He sits at a table alone, eating dried meat. Three empty seats surround it. The man huddles into his chair, away from you, and stares. He takes another bite anyway. Uh, talk. You give a greeting, trying to alleviate his worries. Oh, you're just a traveler. I see, I see. I could have atta attacked him. Well, welcome, then, to my, well, our humble abode. It's a bit messy right now, but, well... He points towards the door. It's just so cold these days, you know, hard to get much done. Beside the door... Besides the door, nothing else leads outside. There are no windows, and the only lights, light comes from a small lantern hanging from the ceiling. The man watches you. Is he waiting for you to say something? You said hour before. The man smiles your question. Yes, hour. Me, my wife, and our children. They are out right now. He leans back in his chair. I'm holding down the fort for now. Plenty of food for them stored up. See? I think uh, they'll be a mite hungry when they get back. I want to make sure I can welcome them back with a warm meal. Where are your wife and kids? Oh, where? Down at the temple, see? Have you seen it? Points east in the general direction of Town Square. It's down uh, down over past the markets. Biggest thing here protects us from the cold. Well, much as it... I hope this his kids aren't the ones that were in the... Oh, those weren't his kids. And the wife. People go over there to pray when the cold bites this bad. My wife went too. When will they be back? The man smiled just for a moment. They'll they'll be back when they're back, I guess. When everyone is done. He seems to be lost in thought. He does not look at you when he speaks. When winter was kicking up, people started to go missing. People went to pray for the cold to calm down, but then they go missing. More pray, more go missing. Missing, missing. Everyone goes missing. The man huddles into himself, staring down. I had to work. I still had to work. See? I couldn't go with them. But my wife, she takes the kids and they go pray. Say they'll come back soon. Starts to smile again. And I'll be here when they come back, see? I'll have a full meal for a lot of them, ready and waiting. So I must be here. I must wait. They've been gone for a long time. How can I get to the temple? The man stares through you. His smile lowers. You. You plan to pray then? Uh, well, yes. Yes, you should go pray. It is good. It is. It is what we do. Just go down the stairs past the market. You won't miss the temple there. Big doors, which I've already went to. They close and closing. Oh, no, no. Maybe that's like all the way down the stairs. Okay. Why? Why won't they open anymore? The man clutches his head. After a moment of silence, he calls to you. Head still drooped. You'll come back. You with everyone. You'll come back from the temple. And when you do, I'll be waiting. See? I'll be here. And I'll have a meal for you, too. He looks up and smiles again. Food piles in all corners of the house, ice and salt used liberally, he catches your uh, your wandering eye. The food. He looks confused and winds his eye. Of course, you must be trying to hold out through this winter as well, right? It's quite cold these days, no chance for hunt or harvest. I only have so much, but I, well, I can spare some for you, traveler. Here, take it. Be safe. Ooh. A small piece of dried meat that's been salted restores three energy. Nice. Okay. Um, we did that. Let's go to the right alley. Darkness envelopes the alley as you, pa as you passage in. Only when the light is nearly gone do you reach a corner and hear a strange noise. You peer around the wall. A watery reflection of light in a glassy black eye is all you can see. Something begins shambling towards you. Encountered Mistwalker. What do you want to do? Player, Mistwalker. Oh, this is the battle scene. Oh. Slam? How much mana do I have? Deals 10% damage to a single... Click on yourself to start your attack. Drag your mouse through enemies as fast as you can. Player deals five damage to a squad. They stare you down. Oh, ouch. Uh, let's attack. 
They wobble in place. Oh, I missed! Oh my god, I missed! Okay, I gotta be more... I gotta be... I gotta be better at that. Jesus. Their eyes are glazed over. Can I pick up this money? Oh, and I can still attack. Okay. Hey! Okay, so you can walk around. That's really cool. That's really cool. It's quiet. Um, A ladder leading up to the roof. You climb up the ladder to the house's roof and find a sprawling web of pathways from roof to roof hidden from the streets below. Doors lead in, the, in and out of the attic of homes and abandoned shops exist there as well. A few of these stand still... A few of these stands still hold some of their wares. The air is colder up here, but the fog is largely gone. It covers over the streets, making it hard to see below the walkways. The rooftops have clear wear on them, but look plenty sturdy for any traveler. Inspect the stands. The different shops hold old linens, broken pots, empty vials, and shattered glass. Glasses for sale. Most of it is more aesthetic than practical. None of it is useful to you. You do, however, notice that almost all of them have dark egg edge in, into them somewhere, along with a series of odd winged beasts. At the back of one stand is an intact glass pot, mostly wrapped in a pouch. It has no noticeable wear. Perhaps it might sell for something. What is that? A beautiful glass pot found inside the cold gates. An etching of a winged beast and the dark egg adorn it. Yep. Uh, yeah. I'm going to stop there. That's my one hour of sponsored content. Uh, for Dark Egg. If you guys are interested in this game, please, exclamation mark sponsor in chat. Check it out on Steam. There is a demo. I am not even done the demo. It seems like a pretty long demo. I think that you guys should check that out. More importantly, if you want to see this game get finished for a full release, please check out the Kickstarter. As you can see up here, you can see it there. If you type in Dark Egg and Kickstarter, I'm sure you can find it there as well. Um, but this game's great ton of fun uh i think that it has a lot going for it in terms of what the map shows with the puzzles the puzzles are super cool uh the the encounter with the enemy was super cool at the end there tells a very the person who does the writing you're very good at writing uh i think that's phenomenal um there are a few things to take a look out for that that i'll probably have said throughout um but yeah very good job and i enjoyed it so thanks guys for tuning in for that